everybody, it's Joe from GreenLightSound.com, and today I want to talk about one of the basics in audio, and that is high-pass filtering. And a couple of topics in high-pass filtering. Number one, why we use it. Number two, how far to go. And number three, which we're actually going to talk about first, which is why some engineers are against it and don't use it at all. So let's hop over to Plugin Doctor really quickly. And I've got an instance of Pro-Q3 up. Both of these EQ bands are off right now. So you can see the phase response. This is not frequency, but phase response is completely flat right now. If I engage the high pass filter here, you'll notice we skew that phase response in the low end a little bit. This is a 12 dB per octave slope. If I go to 6 dB per octave, it's not quite as extreme. And when I go above 12 dB per octave, I'm getting more extreme changes to the phase response. I'll go back to 12. Now, if I turn this band off and go to a low shelf instead, much less extreme phase shift when we do that. So a lot of engineers will, instead of using a high pass filter, use a low shelf instead and bring it down. Now you'll still have some of that sub remaining, but you can pull it down a lot. This is 20 dB of cut right here, which is quite a bit. And you can see it can pull it down farther and farther and we get a little bit more of a shift in it, but that's 30 dB. That's gonna cut out most of that low information. But again, if you wanna cut it all out with the filter, at a really steep slope, you sacrifice some of that crazy phase response. And this is a really steep filter. This is going to be 48 dB per octave. So first step would be to use some more gentle slopes when you are filtering. That'll have less of an impact on phase. But like I said, in my case, I tend to not use really steep filters. And I think with that more gentle slope, the phase response is not messing up the mix really for me. So let's listen to an acoustic guitar part right now. It's got no EQ on it at all, just the dry signals. So why we would use a high pass filter in this case is because we don't want that low or sub information in a part like that to interfere with the instruments we want living down there, bass, kick drum, and some other instruments that may be in your mix you want to take up that low end. We want to get rid of that stuff. So I'm going to put that high pass filter in now as it plays. So the technique I use when using the high pass filter is simply to bring it up till it's too far and I'm starting to cut out that core of the sound. I, I can start to hear that filter and then bring it back a little bit. Again, I did this. And brought it back. If I bypass it. And with the filter on. And you won't hear a big difference, but you are missing some of that subby stuff. So if I flip this over and make it instead of a high pass filter, a low pass filter, this is the stuff we cut out. Here's what it sounds like. I'll crank it up so you can really hear it. That's the junk we don't need in this mix. If I go through the same process on a piano part, I would do it like this. Now, if you think it's too muddy in this area, instead of driving that high pass filter all the way past it, what I do instead is add another band here and make it a shelf and bring that down a little bit. And that'll give me control of that low end of the instrument without cutting it all out. The filter's job is something different. That's cutting out anything I don't want to hear at all below a certain cutoff frequency. So again, I just bring it up to where I can get just past the core of the sound, then bring it back a little bit to be conservative. You want to feel the lack of that low end energy more than you can hear it not being in the signal. And again, if I flip this band over, here's what we cut out. We definitely don't need that in the piano part if you've got a kick and a bass drum in your mix. That's just too much low stuff to be in there. So what are our takeaways here? Number one, don't be afraid to use filtering, but be careful about how steep your slopes are because it will affect your phase response. Number two, if you don't like the sound you're getting with a high pass filter, try a shelf instead. You might get a better result that way. Number three, pull that filter up until you start to touch that core of the sound and then back it off a little bit. You always want to err on the side of being more conservative with your filtering than cutting too much of the signal out 
and hollowing out your source. That'll give space for the instruments that you actually want to live down there, your kick drum, your bass drum, and anything else you want living in that low end of your mix. And it tends to make your mix sound a lot cleaner doing it this way. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, so we can keep you in the loop as to what's coming up next. And I'll see you in the next one.